Hi, I'm Tony Hill. And I'm Jim Proctor. And you're watching Sports Plus Chicago. The Miami Dolphins come into Soldier Stadium to take on the Chicago Bears. The Bears winless in their last three games and winless in while have lost five out of the last seven games at home have really been struggling. Filling in for my partner Jonathan Scott, and by the way, who just got picked up by the Atlanta Falcons, is Jim Proctor. Now Jim, hey, Jonathan Scott, big fellow, offensive lineman, always gives me his perspective about what's happening on the offensive line. Being a wide receiver, I don't really know all that stuff, so it's been kind of good. Tough shoes for you to fill, but let's give Jonathan Scott a big hand because this guy, you know, he wants to play in the NFL, and I think he's going to do some great things with the Atlanta Falcons. Yeah, great guy, and I want to wish him the best on his future endeavors with the, with the Atlanta Falcons. Outstanding, outstanding. Well, Jonathan, we hope you're watching because we got a great show over here. The bottom line, Chicago Bears, they just can't find a way to win in Soldier Stadium. I mean, these, they, I mean when they don't have turnovers, they play well. But when they play at home, they have turnovers. As a result, Alshon Jeffries, who's been a big player for the, uh, for the uh, Chicago Bears, unfortunately, he catches two passes at the beginning of the game and does not catch another pass in the second half. After that, Brandon Marshall has a chance to speak afterwards about the, some of the failures with the Chicago Bears. And, you know, what do you think about that? Well, I mean, some of the stuff that was coming out of the locker room afterwards, and I, and I think that maybe this is a good thing for Brandon Marshall to be stepping up and speaking. I know the... The reports were there was a lot of yelling and things of that nature, but I think that what Brandon was saying is is that it, this is just unacceptable. The way the offense has been working, like you said, I mean the first half they were only able to muster 54 yards and two first downs, and, and they were shut out in the first half. That's the first time the Bears have ever been shut out in the first half under Mark Trestman. And, and, and very good point. And, and when you talk about that, you know Brandon was very cool. I thought he kept his cool. I thought he was very. Uh, from a leadership standpoint, really took charge. And, and the thing that he emphasized was, was, was this. It wasn't I. It wasn't Brandon Marshall. Mm -hmm. It was us, we as a we. team. And the things that he talked about was Martellus Bennett. You know, we've got Alshon Jeffries. we got Matt Forte. we got a very good offensive line who's grooming. And Jay Cutler, who's a very good quarterback. And if we can only score 14 points, it's going to be a long season for us. Yeah, there's no, there's no question about that. And you as a wide receiver, I would ask you this. I mean, one thing I looked at going into that game was between with Jeffrey and, and Brandon Marshall, they had such a huge size advantage out there at the wide receiver spot. They're going up against corners that are 5'8", five, 5'9", five, and I really just didn't think that the offense exposed that to their advantage. Um, I really thought that they would be able to dominate those defensive backs in using their size, and same thing with Martellus Bennett. I mean, Bennett being able to go across the middle and work the inside with those linebackers, I thought he would have a big day, and it just didn't produce for one reason or another. And you're absolutely correct. I mean, when you look at the Chicago Bears' last game, Forte had 10 receptions, Jeffries had six, Marshall had five, uh, Martellus Bennett had five, and they played well and they won. They executed. Now, when you look at this ball club, for them to be successful, you've got to go to Marshall is a big-time player. He's been there. They want you to throw the ball up. I mean, one of the things that Manning does – and, I, and I'm referring to the Denver Broncos, of course, but Manning gives his receivers a chance to make plays. I mean, and that's what all quarterbacks are. As a wide receiver, one thing we always say, we're only as good as our quarterback. And if you don't give us the ball, you don't throw the ball to us, we can't catch what's not thrown to us. And I think that's one of the big complaints that they had. I mean, again, I think you're absolutely dead on the fact that they had small cornerbacks, the fact that they've got all pro or pro bowl wide receivers mm -hmm. on that ball club. And Martellus Bennett, here's a guy who was, you know, number two in the, in the country as a basketball player or, and number three as a, as a football player. So without a question, when you're 6'6 six, six and, and, and with his size and can jump, you got to take, take advantage of those resources. Now flipping, you know, let's flip the channel a little bit. Of course, you know, uh, you know the offense obviously did not produce. But one of the things that we have to emphasize is the fact that Tanner Hill, Ryan Tanner Hill comes in the game he starts, he connects on his first 14 passes in a row. You just can't come into your home, in your backyard and let a quarterback, a young quarterback, have that type of success. Yeah, and, and I think people have to realize that this is not the Bears defense of old. I mean, there's a lot of new players in there. 
Good the point. Shining, the shining spot, I thought, for the defense was obviously Jay Ratcliffe. Uh, he had three and a half sacks. That's the most sacks uh, by a bear in, uh, I forget how many years, but uh, I think it was since 1963 that a defensive tackle had that many sacks. So he played a great game, but the rest of the defense just didn't hold up. Well, and that's a good point. I think when you look at it, Ratliff, they've been, been wanting something to come from him for quite some time. And this is the first time he's emerged as a true player on that defense, or that nose tackle over there, really bringing some havoc to that, offense, to that offensive line on the opposing team. But again, though, we, we, we talk about Tanner Hill. I mean, it was like 25 of 32, I think, uh, of 34. Uh, and, 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 he, and he played well, you know, and, and he passed the ball efficient. And any time that, you that you're in the windy city, for lack of a better term, you always got to be cognizant of a quarterback who throws the ball exceptionally well. And that, in my opinion, causes concern when, I'm looking about, when I think about the Chicago Bears defense. Yeah, and I think that they need to get more out of Jared Allen. I think Jared Allen's really got to step up. We know he's got a big contract up there. And I think he needs to step up. And I think if he can step up and, uh, and Ratcliffe can continue to play the way he did this weekend, I think this defense has a good opportunity to turn things around. Well, and I think you've had a very good point with Jared Allen. I mean, obviously coming from Minnesota, coming here, a big-time player, and obviously playing on big bucks. And he performed last week very well. And again, when we look at the Chicago Bears, and, and we know that this is not the Bears of the old for the simple fact that there's so many injuries that are bogging this ball club down. I mean, they're, going, they're a team that is depleted from a defensive standpoint, from the secondary standpoint. Uh, you know, linebackers, they're, they're hurting from that perspective. Yet, they've got the ability still to perform and still be able to play. This offense can put 30 points on the board. This defense, with the couple of players they have on that defensive line, I still think they can get the job done, but they've got to have consistency. And, of course, when you have a Canadian coach who's wide open from an offensive standpoint, that's got to be a lot of positives on behalf of Chicago. Yeah, the, the Bears are going to go as far as the offense takes them. The offense needs to keep this defense off the field not have the turnovers and putting them right back out in, in bad positions. So it, it's really all about the offense. The offense has kind of sputtered, came off of a great game against Atlanta last week, and Atlanta's a good team. And they came off a big win of, against Atlanta <laughs> in Atlanta. <laughs> Well, and now, you're, now they come home and they kind of lay an egg with Miami. Well, that's, that's interesting that you say that Miami, I mean, well, I'm sorry, Atlanta's a good ball club. I think they're a victim of their own HBO success. Yeah. I mean, I think it's, it's like being put on the cover of Sports Illustrated. You go on this cover, you're, you're destined for failure. You get on HBO or television, and you're destined for failure. Atlanta does have a lot of good athletes on there. I mean, Steven Jackson over there, but he's only averaging two yards a carry. Right. Uh, you look at uh, now Julio Jones, I think this guy's a beast. He's a great ball player. If you can contain him, great. But Roddy White had a great game, but he hasn't showed up all year. So when you talk about Atlanta, I don't know if that measuring stick's really good for him. Now, you and I were talking off the air, and we're talking about what's going to be happening coming up. Um, you know, when Chicago plays their next two games, I mean, they've got New England and they've got Green yeah. Bay on Thanksgiving. On the road. On the road. And, so on the road. and, they, then, uh, and then they uh, come home, and then they have uh, – then they go to Detroit for Thanksgiving. So the schedule doesn't get any easier for them. And there you have it. Chicago's got a tough road ahead of them, but they can, they can be achievers. They can accomplish it if they get their consistency all together. For myself, my partner, Jim, and I'm Tony, that's Sports Plus. Sports Plus is brought to you by Bittenhausen Automotive. It's better at Bittenhausen. It is better at Bittenhausen. Hi, this is Paul Southman for Sports Plus, and I'm here with the beautiful 2015 Fiat Abarth. This is the performance edition of the Fiat 500. This thing is quick. With a 1.4 liter 14 16 valve multi air turbo engine, this heavy duty six speed automatic transmission will make sure you get there while still getting 27 miles per gallon. With 16 inch 6x5 inch aluminum wheels, bi function halogen projector headlamps, and in back, you'll find the dual bright exhaust tips. Check out these great performance cloth high back bucket seats. Black with red trim in the front and the back seats. The Abarth features the Blue and Me hands-free communication as well as the Fiat premium audio system. Check out the leather wrap shift knob as well as the steering wheel mounted audio controls. You want something cool? You want something fast? You can get it right here at Bettenhausen Fiat of Tenley Park.
And we're back at Sports Plus Dallas. Now, you know, sometimes I get to fly all over the country and talk to some of the most interesting people. Your in life's so hard. I know. It's incredibly hard. However, sometimes you get to see these movies, and some of them are amazing. Some aren't. Yeah, right, exactly. However, I did see one that's pretty amazing, and you're going to hear a lot about it. And that is Birdman. Well, he's one of my favorite actors. So. Michael Keaton? Yeah. I mean, Absolutely. old school, you know, seriously, he's awesome. <laughs> Was he your favorite Batman? Yes. Well, I'm sure he there's people been. that can say that he's not the best, but I think he's the best. Absolutely. His voice best. alone is amazing. Yeah. Oh. And now he's playing a washed up superhero actor who's trying to revive his career in Birdman. And this is a big resurgence for Michael Keaton. In fact, some people are talking that. He might get an Oscar nomination. But he I heard may it, even win the Oscar. And it's awesome. I mean, it's like it's a, it's a funny movie, but it's also serious. I mean, that's kind of hard to do. And that's pretty, I mean, it's Oscar worthy, you know? <laughs> well, it's definitely a unique movie experience, that's for sure. And I also got to talk to a pair of wonderful actors. You know them, Edward Norton and Emma Stone. So let's check out a clip with all three of these fine actors for the film Birdman in theaters this Friday. Listen to me. I'm just a you are the original, man. Let's make a comeback. That's what I'm talking about. You're a bird, man. Well, congratulations on this film. This one is so exciting and so different. You, you must have been thrilled when you were, when you were reading the script, right? Yeah. Um, the script was well written, um, but, and he, uh, Alejandro and I had met, and he, was beginning the process and he tried to explain to me uh, how he was going to make the movie, which now that you've seen it, you've seen that it's not made like movies are normally made. So uh, when reading it, you had to factor that in. And you know, like I say, I thought, oh, this is well written. But then you start to think of him shooting this particular thing you're reading and uh, you, you know, I kind of thought I, I got it, and I did get it, and then you don't realize how hard it is until you're, you know, until it's too late. <laughs> yeah, so working with Rick and Tom since, like, lost with a monkey, huh? I might have said that. Yeah, you might. Come on, let's go. <laughs> it was really wild to make. It was really, it was unbelievably fun and exhilarating. I mean, it never stopped being exhilarating, which a lot of times on set I think you can get bored because there's a lot of waiting around, and it did not feel like that no. even remotely. I, 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 I had as much creative fun and as I've had on any movie in a long time just because the uh, the the, no, the novelty of the approach created this gravitational pull on the whole thing for I think it, it made the company more cohesive not just the cast but but the way the cast worked with the crew and like Emma said it it, it is just sort of the convention on films when you make them that about half the people during a given shot will kind of look and go, oh, that, this isn't me, you know, I'm kind of off on this, and a certain percentage of people will be working, and then you'll break, and then other people engage. And on this, it, it really, on the whole, just about everybody was kind of on together all the time. And, and I think it, it created, a, it, it created a, a kind of a, a focus, a connection through focus, and then in success, when something nice happened, it was this great collective <laughs> celebration that's very unusual on a normal day. Yeah, I was going to say, I feel, I feel like if I were to ask you about any one of your movies, something would stick out from it. But what do you think is the day, the moment, the scene that will always stay with you for this one? Because I think you will remember this one years from now. It will stick out. I, I think probably the, the scene in the basement, because that was so um, mm. kind of finely choreographed. And that, I mean, that must have been an eight-minute take. We come to the basement and go through, and you see him. Naked. And then oh, you're talking about there. That's that so one, and then out to Zach and down the hallway, and that was a that was a we we did that one a lot. That was a long. We did I, that I one think, a lot. Yeah, kind and of, it was sort of a, like a microcosm of of all that we were ever. I think everyone in the cast was in that. And, and it has a lot of the screwball kind mm -hmm. of rat tat off. energy of it. It's very it's very nice. I I was just, I, I thought you were going to say I I love. Uh, there's one time Michael comes in. Off the street, sort of, and and you and you really cut him down mm. in that scene. And there's something. Um, it's an example of what I love about the film, which is again, the the scene where Emma's character just eviscerates her father. You, 
you would always see that you'd see his reactions as she's cutting him down. You'd see his face falling. You'd see her reaction. Blah blah blah. And it's such it's it's an absolutely beautiful thing to watch her do this to him, never see his face, and then in this total silence see what's happening to him in her, as her face falls, and she realizes, and only after a while come around and find him. It's 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 such an unusual way to present an exchange between two people, and it works so beautifully. I, I, I really love stuff like that. Yeah. Now, we ask everyone their Hail Mary moments, the moment in their career where they just kind of had to go for it and it worked out for them. What do you suppose that was for you? What was yours? I don't know. I, 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 I don't know that I've, I, I mean, um, I know this is a funny thing to say, but it's like, you know, like, none of this stuff is like, treating Ebola patients in Liberia. It's all pretty fun, you know what I mean? Like, I've never, I've never really felt, um, I, I generally, things that have come along that have been really distinctive have generally given me um, a kind of a, an, an anticipatory tingle of excitement. I, I have never really, um, I, I think actors, I think actors almost on a cellular level are so are so excited by that that next that next that it doesn't it, I'm not sure I mean you're now I would feel that if I was going on Broadway to sing and dance in a classic production like Cabaret <laughs> that would be a big Hail Mary especially if I was playing Sally Bowles <laughs> that would be like wow he's the, but it's so exciting yeah he's a Hollywood clown in a lycra bird suit Yes, he is. But he's going out on that stage and risking everything. This is about being respected and validated. Remember, that's what you told me. I got a chance to do something right. I got to take it. And people are always they're already talking Oscar buzz. What yeah. Do you, what do you think of all that? Well, you know, they're talking about it. It's all right with me. It's nice. You know, anyone who tells you, you know, that's flattering. So, you know, to act like, oh, shock, it's very flattering. You know, anyone who's tells you they don't like when people, you know, walk up to you in a, you know, parking lot or a drugstore and says, you know, wow, I saw you in some f movie or show or, and they're complimentary and they say they don't like it, they're a liar. It's always nice to hear that. So, that's a nice thing to hear. Great. Thank you so much. You got to see this one, right? It's going to happen. It's going to yeah. happen probably this, as soon as possible, this weekend. Good. Well, you're going to hear a lot more about this film in coming weeks, so stay tuned for more on Sports Plus next. Hi, this is Paul Selfin for Sports Plus, and I'm here at Bettenhausen Fiat in Tenley Park taking a look at the brand new 2014 Fiat 500L. We've got a 1.4 liter turbo engine with a six speed Euro twin clutch transmission, and that'll get you 27 miles per gallon, 24 in the city, 33 on the highway. This Fiat comes equipped with 16-inch aluminum wheels, bifunction halogen projector headlamps, daytime running headlamps, heated power mirrors with spotter mirrors, deep tent sunscreen glass, and there's some really cool options for you, including a Bluetooth voice system with Sirius XM satellite radio, GPS navigation, park view rear backup camera. Now check out this interior. We've got the all-important media hub, which has a USB. We got steering wheel mounted audio controls, black cloth, low back bucket seats. Here's what makes the L really cool. It's got four doors, which gives you easy access to a spacious back seat. And that is the 2014 Fiat 500L. And you know where you can get it, at Bettenhausen. Because remember, it's always better at Bettenhausen. Well, we're here for Sports Plus Chicago at Bettenhausen Dodge. I'm joined with my co-host Jennifer Reed. And also, we've got Dennis McKinnon back with us and the one and only legendary Steve McMichael. How are you? This is how I want you to announce me next All time. right. All pro Super Bowl champion, monster of the midway. Show us That's your rings. Triple monster crown, of baby. the midway. Look at, look at these rings here. It's Johnny Cash. Look at that. Yeah. You, see, you see these three? This is because I played with great people. This was because I know how to butter my bread. Yes, you uh, do. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> my guy. You know, I, I was going to ask you. You made a Johnny Cash comment earlier, and you you had a, you had a great oh, you like about that, that. Comment? Yeah, I like that. He was a singer that thought he was a badass. <laughs> I am a badass. 
yeah. Those are my defensive guys. So oh, yeah. That's what I'm talking about right Absolutely. there. Absolutely. Well, you've, you've got a lot of great stories I, I know together. Probably some of them we can't discuss here, but, but what, what do you think is one of the fondest memories you guys have together? From playing. Don't, I don't know why you think we couldn't discuss them. Oh, we can discuss them. We can't, we can't, talk, we can't, <laughs> talk, about just get we can't talk about shower scenes. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> we, had, we had some good guys on that team, baby. Yeah. We don't want no police blotters. Yeah. And uh, the guys that weren't married would run around town. I promise you, back in my day before I was married in the early 80s, mm-hmm. if there were camera phones back then, you'd have seen my naked ass in Vegas before Prince Harry's, my friend. <laughs> and wh- who's got a problem with that? Yeah. And Come you would have been fine with that. You, a man's got, got, you only have one, you know. Yeah. You, you would have considered that advertising. A man's got a right to seek his happiness. That's in the Constitution. There you go. <laughs> Thank you. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> See, my defense guys, strong mentality, mm-hmm. didn't care. They showed up every Sunday. We fought every day in practice. But then again, you knew what you had next to you. Yeah. That's what it's all about. It was like uh, uncles. <laughs> at the family picnic fighting over the last beer. <laughs> but once it's drank, you're patting each other on the back and nobody from outside of that better jump on your, your other family member. Yep. Or you can have a problem with them, right? Yeah. That's, that's what a team has to become, a family, if they want to win. So do you think the Bears are playing like that today? No. Hmm. Part of the reason is Jay Cutler is not a team leader. Hmm. He got his money and he doesn't care about what the other boys think about it, or him, or anybody else. Yeah. That's not the motivation the guy needs to be, to, to become, to be something special. Yeah. Well, the money's quite a bit different now. Uh, did you, do you think that would have changed you guys a lot had you had the same kind of salaries and bonuses that these guys are getting? <laughs> We'd have been, we were definitely at the strip club almost every week. <laughs> I, I we had more coin to spend. Yeah. Look, uh, I'd already come in here and bought four of these muscle cars and been housed, baby. You better believe it. (laughs) Are you a racer yourself? I used to have a 69 RS Camaro convertible that they came up with just to run in the rally, baby. Well, and I know a lot of people remember the the four horsemen. And and how, how much fun was that to transition from football into wrestling? Boy, 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 every little kid's threat to their parents is a uh, runaway to the circus. Well, think twice, <laughs> young man. I thought, boy, getting on the wrestling road and experiencing new things, I was a traveling carny. Yeah. I'd be home two days out of the month to get clean clothes. Mm. And you don't, have a, you don't have a family life. Yeah. All those guys' private lives are miserable. I did it for three years, and it wasn't fun anymore. And that's what I thought. They said, how long are you going to do that? I said, still, it's not fun anymore. And it, it got to be not fun being on the road like that. So I came home, had a little baby girl, six years. She's six Aww. years old now wow, in first grade. Oh, yeah, it's so great. She jumps, up, <laughs> she jumps up on the bed the other night to look at me eye to eye. And I said, don't worry, baby. You're going to be tall like daddy one day. And she looks back at me and says, but not as fat, right? <laughs> oh, <sorry. laughs> Oh, no that's filter. I like it. Yeah. <laughs> oh, it's, it's, uh, it's all going to come back to you, right? That's what oh, we worry yeah. about, right? Here, let me be a proud dad. Go ahead and talk a minute, Dennis. Let me draw this picture <laughs> up of her. Well, the great thing about it is I like he, it. he had it when he was 50. Oh, yeah. So I told him, I said, you know, I've been in visiting him at the hospital, and I'm like, you know what? You got to change your life now because you got a little baby girl now. Yeah. You can't be the same old Mongo we used to know. You know, and I think children do change your perspective on life because now you become a protector. Yeah, you know, so he's a lot more mellow now as a dad oh. than he ever was as a player. Yeah. So here's, where did that nickname come from? Here she is graduating kindergarten. Oh, uh, there we go. Can you hold that up, uh, the camera? There we go. A proud right. dad. You better believe it. I, I can, I'm home now. I can be dad. So yeah. On the road. yeah. Oh, that's so go. cool. Mm-hmm. Well, what's the one thing you guys miss the most about being on the field? Um, honestly, annihilation. Yeah. We, we enjoyed intimidating the opposition and then annihilating them on the field within that 60 minutes. And uh, because we know we were always prepared, we had each other's back, and it was really fun playing the game. And, and I think just the relationships that we had uh, culminating in the 80s and an organization that wasn't winning for a while. And then for some reason that, you know, everything aligned and uh, special, special bond, special relationship, and just some great guys. And, and, and I think the city doesn't appreciate us as much as they knew now, because of what they had then, it'll never be duplicated again. Yeah. 
Well, let's hope the Bears can find some kind of uh, winning in them, something, something that you guys had. If, if they want to be treated special in Chicago, mm -hmm. that's the main motivation. Yep. You know, my last game was 20 years ago in January, and people still treat me like a demigod around here because I went out there. You know, the, the biggest thing about that team, why we'll never be forgotten, is we weren't just football players, we were entertainers. Yeah. You know, just like I'm sitting here mm -hmm. entertaining you and the people out there watching. Man, the thing I miss, and it's why I went into wrestling, is walking out that tunnel to the roar of the crowd. Mm -hmm. Man, there's nothing like that. Yeah, you can't Nash. replace mm -hmm. it. It's why guys get battle fatigue after they yeah. retire, because that's not in their life anymore. And they do strange things and mm -hmm. yeah. bad things to get that rush, man. But you can't, it, wrestling didn't do it. Yeah. You mm -hmm. have to experience it for yourself. And that's why all the pain and the work and the blood and the sweat and tears is worth it. Not the winning. Winning is raindrops in time, man. You know how short a stay that was when we won the Super Bowl. Yeah. The next day after the <laughs> after the after the parade was over. Yeah. Huh. All right, we gotta start trying to do it again. Yeah. Man, that's a short stay. The climb up the mountain defines a man, not the top. I gotta know what was it like to be on that '85 team, that whole rock and roll road show. Ha <laughs> ha. You already knew, didn't you? <laughs> I don't care where we went, that the fans in that town, because it wasn't just fan, Bear fans traveling. We had Bear fans in every city we played in, mm -hmm. going against you know, the town they lived in, for God's sakes. That's big town there. But there would be 2,000 people at the hotel Wow. waiting for us to get there. Police escort, and, and we had to register under different names. Wow. You know, and, and security guards, you know, we almost had to pay to keep people out of the stairwell. Wow. <laughs> Coming to the fire escape trying to get to the room. Wow. Wow. So what was your uh, assumed names? <laughs> you have a standard uh, one? I Johnny am, Rocket. I am Shaft. <laughs> <laughs> I'm John Shaft. I yes, like I that. Uh, oh, and me, Mongo. Oh, yeah, of course. Oh, you, got, you, you got the stones to call up Mongo's room yeah. and let him find you? Oh. Uh, I gotta know about that Mongo nickname too. Yeah, it's from Blazing Saddles. Yeah, it's why they kicked me out. Of, it's yeah. why they kicked me out of New England. <laughs> if somebody messes with me in practice, he knows I'm going to yeah. club you in the head. Yes, <laughs> and it's on. Well, that's exactly what Hampton saw that character Mongo do in that movie when yep. the, the mayor on his horse came to mess with him and he knocked the horse out. Yes. Well, thank you so much for being with us. Sports Plus is brought to you by Bittenhausen Automotive. It's better at Bettenhausen. It is better at Bettenhausen. That's all for Sports Plus this week. Follow us on Facebook and Twitter at Sports Plus Show. Remember, Jim and Tony, Sports Plus.